Welcome to our lecture online. Now this JE advanced problem is really interesting and typically you will only be able to solve this one if you remember that one equation. If you don't remember it, you're simply out of luck. You're probably not going to figure it out unless you can play around with the units maybe and try to figure out that way. But let me show you how to do a problem like this. Let's read it together. A pulse of light of duration 100 nanoseconds is absorbed completely by a small object initially at rest. Power of the pulse is 30 milliwatts and the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the, well let's put an 8 up there, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. The final momentum of the object is and they give us 4 possible answers. So let's do a pictorial of what's happening here. First of all there's a beam of light and it turns out that a long time ago I was watching a program where a very old uh, Navy officer who had been teaching uh, nuclear physics and all kinds of physics and applications to Navy officers for many years and she was already well into her late 70s and I was watching a program on her because she was very interesting to watch and she explained how light travels one foot per nanosecond. I've never forgotten that. One foot is 30 centimeters so every nanosecond one light travels one foot or 30 centimeters. So if we have a 100 nanosecond pulse that means that this distance right here has to be 100 feet or converted to meters 100 feet is about 30 centimeters per foot so that would be about uh, 30 meters. So the pulse of light about 30 meters long or 100 feet long travels along and hits an object which is at rest. Now it looks like it is completely absorbed because of course if the if the light hits the object and then reflects back off in the opposite direction then the force applied to the object would be twice as great, the pressure would be twice as great and the momentum imparted on the object would be twice as great but in this case it's completely absorbed. So how do we solve a problem like this? Again the answer is you need to know this equation turns out that 1 over the area, area being the cross-sectional area of this beam, times the PDT, the amount of momentum deposited per unit time, is equal to the intensity of the light divided by the speed of light. Again, if you don't remember that equation, you're not going to solve the problem. So what we can do here is we kind of spread things out a little bit, so we can write this as dP is equal to I times A divided by C times DT, and of course, we can, instead of calling it dp and dt, we can call it a small change in the momentum is equal to the intensity of the light times the cross-sectional area divided by c times dt. Or, again, instead of calling it dt, we can simply, we can simply call it delta t. Now notice, the intensity is not given. The cross-sectional area, not given. We know the speed of light, and we know the time elapsed, which is 100 nanoseconds. So how do we get those two values. Well it turns out we have another equation that says the intensity of light is equal to the power of the source divided by the cross-sectional area over which it spreads. So we can replace the intensity by power over area. So this becomes power over area times area over C, speed of light, times delta T. And notice the amount of momentum imparted cannot be calculated like that. And luckily, notice that the cross-sectional area cancels out so we don't need the cross-sectional area, we just need the power which is given, the speed of light, and the amount of time the power lasts. So in that case, the power is equal to 30 milliwatts, that would be 30, well, let's see here, let's make it easy. Let's write it as 3 times 10 to the minus 4, because it's 30 times 10 to the minus 3, or 3 times 10 to the minus, oh, wait a minute, wait, oh, we've got to be careful here. Let me just write it like that because it's easy to get confused in the head. Uh, so 30 times 10 to the minus 3. Speed of light, 3 times 10 to the minus 8. And um, uh, then the delta T is 100 nanoseconds. So that would be 100 times 10 to the minus 9. Okay, now let's get rid of the zeros. So 30 can be written as, so this can be written as 3 times 10. So I reduce this by a factor of 10, so I multiply this time by a factor of 10, minus 2. 3 times 10 to the minus 8. 
and then here divide by 100 multiply time by 100 so this will be uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 7 like this and notice 3 divided by 3 is 1 times 1 is 1 and we have uh, minus 2 oh this is plus 8 plus 8 oh gotta be careful here plus 8 so minus 2 minus 7 that's minus 9 minus 8 that would be times 10 to the minus 17 and notice yes there's one answer this one right here B that is a correct answer so there we go and that is how it's done recapping real quick again without this particular equation if you don't remember the equation and that shows how with when you take the J advanced test it's almost more important just to have memorized as many equations as you can than actually knowing how to use them because if you have the equation at hand you might be able to figure something out on the spot but if you don't have the equation you have virtually no opportunity to get to the right answer because you have no weight on how to approach it so it does appear as memorizing equations is a big part of taking the advanced uh, J, the JE advanced test so this is how it's done it's simple at this point we have the equation we arrange terms here we realize we don't have the intensity in the cross-sectional area but now remember this equation that intensity is power over area area cancels out power is given C is given delta T is given and then it becomes a cinch and that is how it's done